Tesla has begun rolling out its long-awaited FSD beta or full self-driving beta 9 software to the public. This is an update that Elon Musk has been promising for quite some time now. A few months ago, Tesla released a beta version to a small subset of users which showed many improvements and a new interface displaying what the car sees. However, this new Beta 9 version further enhances the UI showing smooth curves and what Elon Musk calls the mind's eye of the neural net or the probability distribution of objects that the cameras see. And Elon Musk has said that the goal is to have the display show everything that the car sees in reality. This version of the software also uses vision only and does away with radar. We went into more detail on this in our Tesla Vision video. The software runs on Tesla's custom version 3 chip inside the vehicle and processes the data that the cameras see in real time, making driving decisions and controlling the car. Behind the scenes, it's running Tesla's latest AI, which is pushed to the vehicle every time Tesla releases an over-the-air update. Tesla also has a version 4 custom chip However, it doesn't make much sense to deploy this chip at the current time. The V3 chip is only 5-10% to utilized, and so the logistics of having to manufacture new chips for vehicles doesn't add any real benefit, but Tesla has this saved in their back pocket and ready to go at any time. If we peel back another layer of Tesla's system, the real magic happens in the data center. Recently, Tesla's AI director, Andre Karpathy, gave a talk where he showed an overview of Autopilot's inner workings and gave a glimpse of what Tesla's data center looked like. Autopilot is Tesla's ADAS system or advanced driver assistance system that can steer, accelerate, brake, and provides vehicle safety features such as preventing the driver from accidentally flooring it into a group of people. Full self-driving is a layer on top that allows the car to navigate on its own. And this is centered around a pretty incredible business model that provides value to customers today. Carpathy has that written on his slide, but I think it's underappreciated that Tesla is able to charge $10,000 for full self-driving capability. While it currently needs to be monitored, it makes driving easier. It's almost like watching someone play a video game, and Tesla gives free software updates into the future. Autopilot safety features, of course, are standard across all Tesla cars. But it's interesting how Tesla is selling direct to consumer, whereas competitors such as Mobileye are selling through other automakers in order to reach the consumer, and companies such as Waymo need to pay people to monitor their vehicles. So Tesla has a close relationship to the customer, which I think is more powerful, especially for getting rapid feedback from consumers. For example, no one is begging Mobileye to add certain new features that they want into their system. Now, in order for Tesla's system to work, they need to collect data for users driving around, and Andre Karpathy says that a large data set is very important, containing clean, labeled data, such as with depth and velocity, and other metrics. And it needs to be a diverse set of data with many edge cases. Training on cars driving in a straight line all the time won't help it learn what to do in strange situations. And so Tesla's come up with a list of triggers to help increase the diversity of the data that they're looking for, and they have a system that basically trains itself. One important thing that Carpathy mentioned is that because Tesla has video data that they've downloaded from consumer vehicles, they can process this in their data center as if the car was seeing this for the first time, and use much higher computing power or heavier algorithms than could have been done inside the car in real time, but because there's no power constraints while they're essentially offline, they can run more powerful neural nets to better figure out what happened in the scene and train the system. Andre Karpathy shows what he calls an insane supercomputer that Tesla is working on to help accomplish these tasks. It's basically a cluster of NVIDIA GPUs that allows for 1.8 exaflops of processing operations and has 10 petabytes of ultra-fast memory. He says that this would be the fifth fastest computer in the world. Now the purpose of this computer is to train neural nets by distributing tasks among many processors or GPUs, having them calculate the results in parallel, and then aggregating those together. Would it make sense to play a video game on here, for example? 
It would probably work, but it likely wouldn't make use of the available resources, and there could be a lot of overhead if you send a tiny task like a one-liner to each computer and have them all come back to you with the results. It could take longer to transfer the data between each unit than it would have taken to just have a few processors complete the entire task. But the real point here is that many OEMs, or Tesla's other autonomous driving competitors, aren't building computers of this magnitude as far as we know, or maybe they're using Amazon Web Services, which could become more expensive for competitors over time. And before I forget, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and check out our website themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Now my biggest takeaway from Andre Karpathy's presentation is actually what's not seen here, which is Tesla's Dojo computer. Tesla hasn't even unleashed its Dojo training computer onto its billions of miles of data yet, and as good as this supercomputer is, Dojo will just be mind-blowing. Tesla will replace these NVIDIA GPUs with its custom ASIC chips, which are especially designed to process video. Computer hardware is much faster than software, and because Tesla knows what it will be using the computer for in advance, it can basically cheat and optimize modules in its chip to do certain operations ultra fast. It would be like having a math test with the same questions for everyone and you get a calculator. That's sort of the equivalent of this NVIDIA based computer that Tesla has built. But because Tesla knows the questions in advance, they can essentially cheat. They can design the calculator like this, such that you only have to push one button and get the answer right away, which is significantly faster. That's sort of what these Dojo chips will do. So however fast this supercomputer is, Dojo will absolutely crush it, and Tesla can drastically speed up the rate at which they process video. Tesla's latest update makes it seem like they are already far ahead of competitors, but throw Dojo into the mix, and that will be another leapfrog step into getting closer to full self-driving without needing it to be monitored by a human. With that in mind, let's do a thought experiment. How much value from autonomous driving do you think is baked into Tesla's stock price currently? Let me know in the comments below. I think most people would say that it's not very much, because they're focused on the upside. You sort of get this call option of big potential upside if Tesla hits it big on FSD. While Tesla's valuation is arguably based mainly on vehicle sales and future vehicle sales growth at the present time, what if Elon says tomorrow, alright guys, FSD is way harder than we thought, we're not going to have it ready ever or at least not for the next 20 years or more. How far does Tesla stock fall on that news? I'm sure it will take a big hit, but again, I think the valuation will be supported by vehicle sales growth. So however much you think Tesla would drop, that might be what FSD value is being baked in by shareholders today. But what I want to do is apply that same logic to Tesla's autonomous driving competitors because I think people are making large bets on the upside of those companies and don't see the downside risk. Based on Tesla's strategy of using neural nets on video data from cameras only to run its system, first of all, that seems the most natural in a sense to me, where just like a human, I look around and I figure out where the safest place to drive is. Other solutions don't seem to scale and they rely on additional sensors such as LiDAR and HD mapping, which could run into issues if the environment changes which in fact the world changes every day. And secondly, as mentioned, I don't really see competitors building these supercomputers to train their neural nets, perhaps because they don't have any data to train on, or they're not using neural nets at all. They're using HD maps and LiDAR and cameras. So if Tesla's having to build these massive computers just to process camera data, and they're still not good enough, just imagine the trouble that the competition is having trying to make sense of all of these other lower resolution sensors as well. So if we're looking at risk, I think it's safe to say that at least right now, Tesla is far ahead of competitors, and I like their strategy better because it does seem more intuitive. So when you buy Tesla stock, you get this call option. It might not be free, but it's being valued like a call option as opposed to a mature, well-defined business, because there's still quite a bit of uncertainty. And if we look at competitors such as Cruise, Waymo, Mobileye, or others, I think this call option idea is true for these companies as well but I think investors are focusing on the potential upside and forgetting about the downside. See, Elon Musk said during the fourth quarter of 2020's conference call that Tesla is more than happy to license out its software, specifically FSD. He said, 
we've had some preliminary discussions about licensing autopilot to other OEMs. This is something we're more than happy to do. Now, some Tesla investors may not be very happy about Tesla licensing out the software that they worked very hard for years and years to build. The downside is, well, why would I buy a Tesla when I can buy a competing vehicle that's powered by Tesla and therefore Tesla loses a sale? I think that that's the main con, but let me know in the comments what the other downsides are. But the pro is that while someone's going to pay for that software and maybe Tesla charges more to other OEMs since part of the price of a Tesla goes towards Tesla's autopilot team's costs and Tesla needs to recoup that. And if you think about it, even by 2030, if everything goes exactly to plan and Tesla makes 10 to 20 million cars per year, there's still going to be other OEMs making electric vehicles. About 100 million cars are sold each year. Wouldn't it be cool if Tesla had access to that much larger market and received $10,000 or $20,000 or more per car that's sold, and then on top of that, money starts pouring in as Tesla takes a 30% cut of every future robo-taxi drive that takes place on the Tesla network, even if it was a drive by a non-Tesla vehicle. So that's some really big upside for Tesla, but I also think that a move like this to license out FSD software could have even more upside for Tesla. Instead of being like Apple, where they keep the software closed, but for the people who do purchase their products, they become part of Apple's ecosystem and maybe buy other products and services too. Instead, Tesla could actually be like both Apple and Android and still have an ecosystem, the Tesla network, in a similar way that Android has an app store. And in the same way where we discussed even if Tesla had to open up the supercharger network, which doesn't make much sense right now, but if they did, they would advertise to non-Tesla owners, the same thing would apply here, where Tesla would get free advertising as competitors or non-Tesla owners would have to log in to Tesla's app or network in order to use the robotaxi system. So there's benefit there as well. But again, what I think some investors are missing is how dangerous this licensing move could be for other players. Think about what happened to Nokia and Motorola and whoever else existed before the iPhone. While Apple took and continues to take most of the industry's profit, it was Google's Android that actually achieved a higher market share than Apple, and that's really what decimated all of the other players and helped keep alive the ones that joined. How could anyone continue investing in their own operating system development if there was a team at Google that already had something better than all the other players, not counting Apple, and some phone manufacturers chose to go with them and partner with Android. Once that happens, they all need to go with Android. If you can't beat them, then join them. And that basically pushed away all the other competitors and made it sort of a duopoly, at least at the time. The point I'm making is that if it's known that Tesla is ahead of competitors and they decide to license out their FSD software at the right price, as mentioned, to at least one OEM, I think that the other OEMs may not have much of a choice but to jump aboard as well as an alternative to getting left behind still trying to get their own version of self-driving working or licensing it from another player that doesn't have it working as well as Tesla. And so this could cause other full self-driving implementations to lose funding, to lose customers, and to be pushed away. And given Tesla's recent beta software release, I'm not sure if people are thinking what will happen to GM's Cruise or Google's Waymo, or Intel's Mobileye, or others, in a very possible scenario that Tesla licenses to these guys' customers or their competitors. What do they do in that case? And we have seen this play out in the phone industry before. Tesla's full self-driving doesn't even have to be 100% complete for this licensing to occur. There are already enough features plus free software updates into the future that make this worthwhile for consumers and for Tesla. FSD being completed will just unlock the additional income from the robotaxi network, but there's no reason why Tesla can't snag a huge amount of market share beforehand and then flip the robotaxi switch later on. For others working on self-driving, it would be like opening Schrodinger's box and finding that the cat is very much alive with a Tesla logo on it and all of the other realities collapse. Not to say that they collapse to zero, but they collapse to their known states, which could be a total collapse for some companies. But whatever investors were betting, the type of non-Tesla market share that these companies could take, 
How does that change if Tesla begins licensing out their software powered by some of the most unique and powerful supercomputers in the world? So do you think Tesla will license out its full self-driving software? And let me know in the comments your thoughts on Tesla's supercomputer and upcoming Dojo supercomputer and how good you think Tesla's latest FSD Beta 9 release is. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.